Sabonis or Sabonis at number eight. We have I had him higher. Again, <laughs> yeah, big side. I had to lower him down, and this is actually uh, where he's ended up one spot to lower than I expected him to be. But Pascal Siakam, you know, we're we're Canadian kids that we we love Pascal. I love Pascal. I think he's near and dear to that championship run. He to me, Pascal is just so quick. That spin move he has in the paint, nobody can defend it. I don't care who you are; they can't keep up with it. That's why he's able to put up twenty two points per game. I just mentally but that bubble, that bubble. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was about to just like mentally, I'm laughing because you say how dear he is to the hearts and how he's a spot higher for you and whatever. And it's almost like I feel like his ranking was so much lower for me. Where I had him, the way our point system works is it ends up with averages and whatever. I believe I had him eight, and I had him so low because of the bubble. And I was so upset about watching that game seven about Boston and how bad he choked that I still hurt to now. And the worst part is I'm yeah. mainly a Boston fan, but whenever the Raptors are making a run and you're Canadian, it's so hard. And he crumbled so, so bad. One of the worst I've ever seen in my life, other than that LeBron finals. Where, like, <laughs> you know what? LeBron's LeBron. He's done everything he has. But other than that, I would actually say that Game 7 was the worst playoff debacle I've ever seen in my NBA watching history. Like, no kidding. Well, I wouldn't say that because I, I do think he did. Who else? He played, very, <laughs> he played very well in center. He played very well defensively at center and power forward. But I mean, in that Game up. 7, in terms of choking when it's your turn to shine, other than LeBron in the final Offensively, he choked hard. Yes, you're <laughs> yeah, right. That was... Offensively, he choked one of the biggest <laughs> chokes. Yes, yeah, you're one right. of the worst we've seen. <laughs> but that is exactly why I actually originally had him at number four on my list. Um, he, he didn't crack the top three to me, but he was actually he was in consideration for that. I had him number four for the longest time. I had to drop him down to number seven, uh, which is where we have him ranked right now. Actually, no, I dropped him down to number six, sorry about that. But um, I think there's so much more potential to him. There's a quote recently where he said he didn't enjoy basketball anymore. He didn't enjoy it in the bubble. He's got to find his joy in the sport again. A joy in the sport? Man, you only learn to play when you're 15. I had a lot of joy in the sport. You're my age. Want to switch, switch bodies? I'll keep going for you. Like, you can sit there and watch me. I'll, I'll, I'll show you all the joy you need. Get out there, man. Love the sport again. He's still young. He's got so much potential ahead of him. If he would have started basketball at a young age, like a lot of the other players do when they're three, four, five years old, he could be already to that level of your – he can be above your Tatums. He can be right with their, right up there with your Durants even. He, he's not – he's okay. He's nowhere close to as good of a shooter as a Durant. But he brings everything else to the table. He brings that. He plays really good defensively. Um, he might not bring uh, have the crazy stats, but he's able to play a small ball center. He showed that in the playoffs. I think that lineup really unleashed something new with the Raptors. He's so quick off the bounce. I, don't, I think he's probably the quickest player in the league off the bounce with that quick spin move he has. Nobody can defend that. But with that being said, that bubble performance hurt him hard. It dropped his rankings at least two to three for both of us. I'm not saying something because... I am a Raptors fan. I watched 50, 60 Raptors game last year. I watched 20, 30 games that weren't the Raptors. I watched him so much. I, you would think my bias would have him at number three. But it, it didn't. It, the, the, bubble, the bubble crumbled him. Crumbled him as a player. He's got to get, he's got to earn that respect back because he hasn't been able to have that legitimate career like, like a Kevin Love who's had 18 points per game. Even if he goes down a little bit, we understand. He hasn't shown us that. He showed us that he can be 20 points, four points per game as he did last year before the bubble. But then he showed us he can be 15. And if he's 15, then he's getting paid way too much. Yeah, and I mean, it, it is hard too where he came into the league and it was almost a surprise in terms of how good he did. We really didn't expect it. Um, he really took us by yeah. storm. Um, and like you said, yeah, he doesn't put up the numbers, but I get what you're saying in terms of Durant, where the best version of Pascal Siakam is very almost undefendable, where, yes, as much as we just laughed about the choke, there were there was an instance in that where he did that spin move, and that's the only basket he got, I believe, in the fourth quarter, and everyone around watching the game was so happy, and everyone I remember was just like, why does he keep, like, his spin move, like you said, is very good, and his putbacks is, like, he's great at when he misses, yeah. getting his own rebound, going right back up, um, 
it's, the issue is when he doesn't know what to do, he clearly panics. And it wasn't really only the bubble. It was the consistency throughout the year where he started the year at, I think it was fantastic 20, 25 or 24 and a half. No, in October, he averaged, I'm looking at it now, 28, 9, and 9.2. 28, yeah. 28 and 9.2. And then for around there, it just went down where it was 24 and 8, 25 and 7. And then it, at 24. Yeah, and then it really hit bottom in January where he uh, went down to 20, uh, 20 and 7. And in March, too, yeah, he went back up to 23. But his, assist, his turnover ratio month to month was about on average 2. And then randomly in March, it jumped up to 3.6. So, I mean, I knew, was, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, there was clearly something going on, not just in the bubble, but in the second half of last year, whether it was the wear and tear, or something going on mentally, visit, who knows? But I think it was mentally, but uh, we don't know. We will we'll never know. And I just hope that we don't ever have to talk about this again. Definitely, because if it's the version of Pax Siakam, where not only in October, but we've seen December to October, where he's a 25 and 8 guy easily it deserves better than a seven spot because he does play on a championship team other than that game seven we haven't seen him have the consistency of choking could hit a shot from pretty much anywhere anytime you need it has a few elements to his game that no other players have so yeah he's, he's unique he is um so like you said probably deserves a higher spot but uh, like he needs to show me it for a full 82 games not 35 no and i i can't agree more like he put up he put up those numbers last year he's he, went down to only 22.9 per game which is still a great amount Definitely. but on the other hand he's playing 36 minutes per game yeah that's he's playing was... like he's a star player like he's a top 10 player in the league but he's he was playing physically his stats showed it in the beginning of last year that he was a top player in the league he can be a leader on the on, in this league he was leading the toronto raptors they missed the most man games out of any team last year for their starting unit and I don't know about you, but around Christmas time, they were pretty damn good to me. They were number two in the league. They were actually jockeying with Milwaukee for number one at one point. They were fantastic. Toronto is on another level when Siakam gets 25 plus per game. Yeah. He has a big potential to do it, though. And like you said, too, like he's one of the top minute getters, not just in the regular season, but the playoffs as well. And normally he doesn't do a lot wrong with the ball, where like we said, most of last year, his turnover ratio is about two, which for a guy who's played 36 minutes per game, like Amazing. That, for exactly. a star, that's yeah. great. And it, it, defensively too, he's good too. Like he was one of only 10 power forwards to get more than one steal per game last year. So like there's not much bad other than that rare performance. And like I said, the season long consistency that Pascal Siakam, I could say, because he's he's been a most improved player if i'm not miss if i'm not yep, he won it two years ago exactly and that's a guy who again had a huge jump from that year to this year too so he could have been he could have been most improved last year if he would have kept up his numbers that he did start the year yeah. he would have been most improved player last year hands down and he i was doing better than brandon ingram yeah and i don't know how many players in the history have won that award two times in a row i don't so, think anyone's ever won that award yeah, two times in a row i was going to be in that boat too maybe someone could quote us and we're wrong but i don't think anyone's won that award two times in a row and that alone shows that how good not only Kelsey Ackerman Ackerman is, is but how good of a fit he is for the toronto raptors too yeah and that, that's but the fact that his numbers weren't his numbers went down uh, his numbers were arguably less than Sabanis and Collins, but he was on a winning team. He is a great fit for that team. He brings something that no other players do in this whole league. That's something unique about him. And that team has been so consistently 50 plus wins. They're second best team in the East last year. He was the best player. He was the best player on a top three team in the league. I'm not talking about the East Coast, the Eastern Week Conference, the whole league. Toronto Raptors had a better year than the LA Clippers. They had a better year than the Houston Rockets. Better year than Miami, Philadelphia, Boston. They're yeah. a great team. Yeah, and it, he, I mean, with Siakam, we haven't had that struggle of playoff success or anything. Um, and even to a Siakam, like, this is a guy, he's only 6'9", but I believe he's 240 pounds. Look at Jaron Jackson, 6'11", 242. Like, Siakam is, uh, he, like, he's just, he's super, yeah, he's super strong. He's not a guy that's going to get pushed around. He likes he's still lanky football. and quick. He is, and, but, like, he likes the physicality. He's, like, yeah. he has culture to him. He's a guy who doesn't mind getting someone's face yelling at him. So, yeah, Siakam, he, he'll be top 10 for a while, I think, and hopefully, for his sake, he can find himself in the top five because if he's as good I think he will. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are, definitely agree. So, we'll see. See, and the person,